Hello students. Today we will learn about the ferrous materials. So if we want to divide the engineering materials for structural applications then we can divide in two categories mainly ferrous and non-ferrous. So as far as metallic what materials is are concerned, the meaning of ferrous remember, material? Metallic materials come Basically, under the two categories. If you see the name itself, and it speaks about the meaning of the material. That ferrous material mainly contains iron as a majority of the fraction of all element compositions. Now, for any metallic materials, it is made of different different elements, like ferrous, carbon, chromium, magnesium, manganese. So if you see the periodic table, then you will see all the elements and the metal mainly possess of different different elements. So here in ferrous material, the majority of the percentage is Fe component or you can say it is iron component, right? Here you can see that the ferrous material group that contains iron in one form or another form so the iron may be one form or it may be another form that means this fe which is available in large volume of fraction that may be chemically reacted with the other chemical elements like carbon so it may react with carbon and it may form fe3c in steel and so on right so remember the ferrous material means it contains more percentage of Fe as a chemical components. So in most of the cases you will see around 80 to 90 percentage of ferrous present in ferrous material. <coughs> now what is the application? So the ferrous materials basically we always see in our day to day life not only from uh, engineering point of view but also we can see ferrous material in day to day life you can say that uh, the automotive the vehicles you use you will see a lot of ferrous materials building in building in in houses we live we see a lot of ferrous materials right then the bridge constructions that the if you see any bridge in Ahmedabad okay you will see a lot of ferrous materials being used railway is a key industry where ferrous material can be found heavy machinery shipping transportation so the ferrous material is everywhere so let us talk about the iron right because in ferrous material the main chemical component is iron so chemical symbol is Fe here is a melting and boiling range in degree Celsius and uh, purest iron the purest Fe comes from the sky in the form of meteors pure iron does not rust in the water iron rusts because it contains impurity and practically the pure iron as far as application is concerned the pure iron is not used why because pure iron is too soft in nature so we have learned the mechanical properties right if it is a too soft then it can be easily scratched and it can affect the surface texture of the material so classification of metallic materials metallic materials categorized as ferrous and non ferrous material ferrous material based on percentage of carbon can be divided in further categories as steel and cast iron steel up to 1.5 percentage of carbon cast iron more than 1.5 percentage of carbon then steel based on chemical compositions alloy alloy means it's like 
a mixing of different different chemical elements such as chromium, molybdenum, tungsten, vanadium, cobalt, nickel, so on. So all the metallic elements, if there is a more number of elements available, then we call it as a high alloy. Is very few elements available, couple of elements only, then we call it a low alloy steel. So low alloy steel having minimum number of chemical elements, so it can be categorized as a low carbon, medium carbon and high carbon steel. In high alloy, it depends on number of chemical elements with respective fraction, volume fraction. It can further be divided as a tool steel or stainless steel. Now how these ferrous materials can be derived? So basically ferrous materials are derived through a blast furnace. Right, so this is a basically through furnacing we can derive the materials and this is the part of extractive metallurgy which deals with the minerals and the mining of the materials. If we want to have a ferrous material then a pig iron basically a main source. This is the main source to get the ferrous material and this main source in form of pig iron having lot of impurities which is available as iron ore so iron ore is nothing but you can say that it is a sort of uh, mining of minerals so uh, when you when you continue digging a respective geographic region where the iron ore is available then by going to few kilometers in depth underground you will find this pig iron and India has a huge amount of iron ore available in few states so they possess a very large amount of iron ore and they extract this pig iron basically it is an impure iron and then after this impure iron is processed in different different foundries or steel making or cast iron making industries so they process this pig iron at different different percentage of ferrous and carbon material in form of ferrous materials. So a pig iron is manufactured in this stage, the ore selection, bracing selection, calcination and roasting and followed by smelting. So this manufacturing is not an area of interest at the moment. Uh, and our area of interest is to learn the different materials. So this is part of extractive metallurgy. So just no need to worry. It is just for the information. Uh, this is different different quality of iron available. 70 percentage iron, 72.4 and less than 50 percentage of iron. Depends on type of ore one can have. Okay, now steel. So steel. Basically steel is what? So as a mechanical engineer I can define steel based on a percentage of carbon. If a ferrous material having less than 1.5 percentage of carbon then I would say it is a steel. Right? And this 1.5 less than 1.5 percentage of carbon let us say a particular material having a 0.7 percentage of carbon that means it is a one kind of steel. Now that 0.7 percentage of carbon may be combined with iron itself and it make a chemical compositions like Fe3C. So this available percentage of carbon it reacts chemically with the other elements. The main element is iron in steel. So it creates or it develops iron carbide and this iron carbide basically is responsible for a strength. We know that the steel is very good choice as far as you are looking strength in your application so iron carbide contributes to the strength now if the percentage of carbon is more than 1.5 percentage then we call it as a cast iron or some people say it's iron right so both are the same thing so iron or cast iron having more percentage of carbon and the more percentage of carbon may be available as a free form 
so that's why more more the carbon percentage in the material more will be the strength so if you compare steel and cast iron you know that the cast iron is much more stronger than steel why because of more percentage of carbon however if you compare cast iron and steel a steel is a very versatile material to be used in industry you see there is lot of applications of steel right in mechanical industry in manufacturing industry right or if you see any household appliance right right now you are listening this video or watching this video at your home so just have just uh, look at your drawing room or just go to the kitchen and try to observe at least 10 to 15 different utensils the utensils just try to observe in your kitchen you will find different different types of steel also you will find different types of non ferrous material but right now just have a look in your kitchen and try to find a steel okay why because steel is having a very good mechanical properties as i told you earlier having excellent mechanical strength and apart from mechanical the heat treatable category or heat treatment capability of steel which excites towards the application so all the steels all the steels are heat treatable now you know what is heat treatment what is heat treatment see the name very carefully is a heat plus treatment so the treatment given to the finished product or manufactured product the treatment given to the finished product or manufactured product at a different heating cycle and cooling cycles that we call as a heat treatment and the purpose of heat treatment is what to improve the properties and to reduce the stresses generated during the manufacturing process let us take an example in welding if you weld a steel component and there is a lot of residual stresses in a weld so it is very important to remove those stresses before putting into the application so for that you need a stress relieving heat treatment maybe annealing right annealing maybe you may do some other heat treatment process so also heat treatment is used to improve the properties right so after manufacturing process we know that the properties are not retained so you want to improve the properties of the finished product or manufactured product then you go for the heat treatment maybe tampering annealing and so many heat treatment processes so the bottom line that the steel having mechanical properties in excellent way and it all the steels are almost all the steels are heat treatable now classification of steel so let us divide steels in two categories low alloy steel and this is high alloy steel so i am saying high alloy steel as alloy steel and low alloy steel i am saying is a plain carbon steel so plain carbon steel is a low alloy steel low means they do not have more number of chemical elements like tungsten chromium nickel vanadium molybdenum and so on while the alloy steel have or more number of alloying elements this is fec diagram and this diagram we just have a look and we will discuss this diagram as a iron carbon diagram later on so under the steel category let us see carbon steel plain carbon steel so plain carbon steel can further be divided in terms of percentage of carbon they possess low carbon medium carbon and high carbon right so this is nothing but low carbon steel means it may have very less percentage of carbon medium means having moderate percentage of carbon and high carbon steel they may have the maximum available carbon that is near to 1.5 percentage of carbon in high carbon steel alloy steel 
different different proportions of different different elements so one can develop one can develop his or her own alloy steel by having a different proportions of chemical elements just like a stainless steel right the stainless steel having a more number of chromium stainless steel can further be varied in terms of chromium percentage so alloy steel is nothing but the different proportions of selected elements in addition to the carbon at production stage and alloy steel the alloy steel alloy steel offers the required property much more better than this plain carbon steel so if i want to differentiate plain carbon steel and alloy steel right so i can say that the alloy steel basically offer the properties which you are looking so the properties which you are looking and if you target a particular type of alloy steel then your purpose can be solved in much more better way in comparison to the plain carbon steel because alloy steels are designed for specific properties so low carbon steel it the name suggests it possesses very low carbon so it possesses 0.05 to 0.3 percentage of carbon right so since it has a very less percentage of carbon then definitely it may not have high properties high mechanical properties compared to the medium and the high carbon steel right so low tensile strength why the carbon is very low but it's very ductile and soft so sometime you are looking a steel right sometime you are looking a steel which has uh, very good toughness means ductility then you would prefer low carbon steel as your material and is it low tensile strength soft so the machinery and weldability is good so the manufacturing the manufacturing process will be much more easier for low carbon steel but the disadvantage that it is very difficult to do heat treatment of low carbon steel you can say it's one of the disadvantage so low carbon steel can be used when you are looking for toughness and second thing when you do not have high end of manufacturing processes which can take care of high strength material then you can use low carbon steel this is very important point that high strength and low alloy steel means hsla are often classified as a low carbon steel however also contain other elements like nickel copper molybdenum and vanadium so this hsla basically is very popular industry that uh, offers a very good resistance to the corrosion because steel for a steel which is very important that the service condition is concerned that how it is going to perform as far as corrosion is concerned sometime they may have very good strength very good properties right but after few working cycle they start corrosion then in service conditions that material may not be surviving for longer period of time the applications you can see of low carbon steel right most of the automobile body components the channels and the i beam cross sections right the bridge components and you must have seen the food cans where strength is not important right so you can see these applications for low carbon steel here you can see some pictures of low carbon steel so you can see these automotive body parts wide range of steels can be seen here you can see this is some professional environmental chair systems you can see these kinds of paints right wires 
can see these are the threaded nuts as a fastener so this medium carbon steel you see here has a very good wear resistance so this property basically used allow in this sort of applications so this applications like railway track wagon wheel and this nuts and bolt assembly gear assembly you can see this is a gear assembly right in a gear box so here you will see there is always a relative motions to each other rotary motions here sliding motions at high speed here again rotary and sliding motions occurs so medium carbon steel because of good wear resistance is a very popular candidate for this sort of applications next one is a high carbon steel high carbon steel range from 0.6 to 1 percentage of carbon so it contains very large number of carbon compared to the previous two steels uh, low carbon and medium carbon steels that's why it is also known as a tool steel you see here tool steel but it has very good number of carbon very good number of carbon means very good strength right more carbon that contributes for higher strength and hardness right and a tool in a tool material you need this hardness and wear as a basic mechanical property but the drawback is that because of high percentage of carbon it reduces the manufacturing such as weldability and sometimes machinery is very difficult for this carbon steel right so it reduces the weldability machinability as well as ductility because more strength so ductility definitely is going to be reduced and also impact toughness and the application you see most of the rear parts knives to cut the applications we want to use as a cutting material because more carbon good hardness so you can see these applications these applications where you will see high carbon steel right you can see here most of the applications cutting high-end gear different different gear spur gear helical gear warm wheel rack and pinion you can see the non-commercial vehicle and you can say that so agricultural component where you see use of high carbon steel so no need to worry about the wear and the hardness of the material you can see here a lot of cutting normal use in our day-to-day -day life this is for metal cutting small example now second category under the ferrous material is cast iron so cast iron will be discussed in the next session so till now we just go through the contents of ferrous materials and especially steel as a ferrous material i have uploaded the material same material uh, on lms so just go to your class on lms that moodle account and go through the details and also read the books and uh, make sure that you understand the steel as a ferrous material in detail okay so we will meet in the next class and we will discuss about the cast iron thank you